Ezekiel is Daniel's 70th week, a prophecy with a date on it by Dave Robbins. After an in-depth study of the entire vision found in Daniel 9, 24 to 27, it is clear that this is actually a prophetic time clock given to us straight from God. The prophecy begins with a commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem and culminates with the second coming of Jesus Christ to the earth at the time of the Battle of Armageddon. It is verse 27 that contains one of the few prophecies in the Bible with a date on it. This is the prophecy most commonly recognized as Daniel's 70th week. It describes in detail the final seven years before the second coming of Jesus Christ and the Battle of Armageddon. Because of the Daniel 70th week prophecy, it is possible for us to know the event that will trigger, trigger the final seven years to Armageddon and that event lies just ahead of us now. The Daniel's 70th week prophecy is absolutely one of the greatest prophecies of all time. It's a prophecy with a date on it. The world stage is set for the final seven years to Armageddon to begin. The only question left to ask is exactly when will it happen? <clears throat> Middle East Peace Treaty starts the countdown. The Bible prophecies that the Palestinians, the world community, and the Antichrist will make a peace agreement with Israel. That agreement will place the Temple Mount under a sharing agreement between Jews and Muslims and will allow for the building of Israel's third temple. There have been two Jewish temples up until now. This peace treaty will allow for the building of the third temple on the Temple Mount in the very near future. This treaty will also establish the final borders of Israel, recognizing Israel's right to exist and to have homeland in the Middle East. When this agreement is signed, it will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. If there is a peace agreement signed that doesn't do the above things, it is not that the one that starts the final seven years. Furthermore, the Antichrist will participate in this very important agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians, even though we will probably not know who he is at that time. <clears throat> the 490-year prophecy. The prophecy of Daniel 9, 24-27 is a 490-year prophecy given to us in three segments. Let's begin by looking at verse 24. Seventy-sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most high, holy place. What is meant by seventy-sevens? God is telling us that there will be 77-year periods of time in the prophecy. How do we know that each of the sevens is seven years? In Daniel 9.27, it states that the event called the abomination of desolation will occur in the middle of the last seven. So if we can tell how long the last half of this seven is, then all we have to do is multiply by two to know how long the full period of seven is. That's easy enough. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 24, 15 to 21, that the abomination of desolation will start the great tribulation. There are six different scriptures that say the great tribulation will last three and a half years. Daniel 27, five, Revelation 13, five, Daniel 12, 7, Revelation 11, 2, Revelation 11, 13, and Revelation 12, 14. Therefore, if the last half of the last seven is three and a half years, then the first half is three and a half years. This means the entire 70th seven is seven years long. Obviously, the other 69 sevens are also each seven years long. This lets us know that we are looking at 70 
seven year periods of time and seven years times 70 equals 490 years. The beginning of the 490 years. Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC and Daniel 9, 1 through 3 tells us that Daniel was given the 490 year prophecy during the first year of King Darius around 538 BC after the Medes and the Persians had replaced Babylon as a leading empire of the world. <clears throat> Daniel 9.25 reveals that the 490 years begins with a commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. Know and understand this. From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be 70, seven sevens and 62 sevens. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. Most likely, this decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem refers to the prophecy decree of Cyrus, the king of Persia, in Ezra 6.3, which occurred around 538 B.C., if our dates are accurate. The history and the calendars that we have for this time period are very unreliable. However, when this 490 year time period begins is not really what's important. What is important is to understand what happens at the end of 69 sevens, 483 years, and what happens during the final seven year period. The prophecy is given in, given in three segments. Verse 25 above explains that the prophecy is given in three segments. Seven sevens, 49 years, 62 sevens, 434 years, and Daniel 9.27 states that there will be a final seven years. So, the prophecy is given in three segments, totaling 490 years. The order is 49 years, 434 years, and 7 years. The revealing of the Messiah. Daniel 9.26 tells us that the 434 year segment will end with two major events. After the 62 sevens, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end and desolation have been decreed. The passage states that the anointed one, the Messiah, will be cut off at the end of the 69th seven. Then it says, after the Messiah is cut off, the temple and the city of Jerusalem will be destroyed. Wait, we know when Jerusalem will be destroyed. It was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. The prophecy specif specifically says the Messiah would come and be cut off before Jerusalem was destroyed. So we know that the Messiah had to come before 70 AD. Did the messianic figure appear in the world shortly before Jerusalem was destroyed? Yes, Jesus came and fulfilled every single one of the prophecies about the first coming of the Messiah. Was Jesus cut off like the prophecy said he would be? Being crucified would certainly qualify for being cut off. This gives us absolute proof that Jesus was the Messiah. The gap. According to verses 26 and 27, two things were to happen after the 483 years and before the final seven years. The Messiah was to be cut off in Jerusalem and the temple were to be destroyed. Jesus was crucified sometime between 26 AD and 38 AD. Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed in 70 AD. Notice that there were 30 to 40 years between these two events. This indicates that there is a gap between the 69th seven and the 70th seven. That's obviously the reason the prophecy was given in segments. If there were no gap, 
then the prophecy could simply have been given as a 490 year prophecy. Instead, we are told there would be 49 years, 434 years, and 7 years. The length of the gap is not disclosed to us in the prophecy. However, we do know today that this gap is about 2,000 years. We still live in the gap period right now, but the final seven years will begin soon. Understanding the final seven years. We have already proven that one seven in this prophecy equals seven years. The final seven years of the prophecy is described in Daniel 9.27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. There is an incredible amount of information in this one small verse. In order to understand verse 27, we need to answer five questions. Who is this he that will confirm the covenant? What is the covenant? What is the confirmation of the covenant? What is meant by stopping the sacrifices? What is this event called? The abomination of desolation. Let's take the questions one at a time. One, who is this he that will confirm the covenant? This is an easy question to answer because the he does three things. One, confirms a covenant. Two, causes a sacrifice and offering to cease. Three, sets up the abomination of desolation. Daniel eleven twenty one through 22 states that the Antichrist, the final king of the north, will be the prince of the covenant. So it's the Antichrist that will confirm the covenant. Daniel 11.31 says that the Antichrist and his partners will take away the daily sacrifice. Daniel 11.31 also says that the Antichrist and his partners will place the abomination that maketh desolate. So the Antichrist confirms the covenant. The Antichrist causes the sacrifice and oblation to stop. And the Antichrist places the abomination of desolation. It's easy that he, in Daniel 27, is the Antichrist. Two, what is the covenant? Genesis 15, 18 explains, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. All the way back in the first book of the Bible, God made a covenant with Abraham that the Holy Land would be given to his descendants for a homeland. This is referred to as the Abrahamic covenant. Three, what is the confirmation of the covenant? If the covenant is God's promise that Abraham's descendants would live in the promised land, then what is the confirmation of the covenant? We've already proven above that the Antichrist is the he of Daniel 9.27. So it follows that he is the one who will confirm the covenant. In other words, the Antichrist will confirm Israel's right to a homeland in the promised land. Presently, Israel's enemies deny that she has a right to a homeland there. Most of the Arab countries have yet to recognize Israel's right to exist. When the confirmation of the covenant takes place, the Antichrist and the world community will confirm Israel's right to exist in the Holy Land within agreed upon borders. This agreement will also establish a Palestinian homeland in the area of Judea, Samaria, commonly referred to as the West Bank. What is meant by stopping the sacrifices? The Middle East Peace Agreement will place the Temple Mount under a sharing agreement between Muslims and Jews according to Revelation 
11, 1 through 2, Israel will be allowed to build her third temple without disturbing the Muslims' holy places. When the temple is completed, animal sacrifices will be offered just like they were in the Old Testament. These are the sacrifices that the Antichrist will stop, probably at the urging of the animal rights activists. What is the event called the Abomination of Desolation? The abomination of desolation appears many times in scripture. In Matthew 24, 15, Jesus said the abomination of desolation would stand in the holy place. The holy place is in the temple, or at least on the temple mount. The apostle Paul described this in more detail in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4. He said the second coming of Jesus would not incur until the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, was revealed. He went on to say that the Antichrist would actually sit in the temple of God, claiming to be God. Where does the abomination of desolation occur? In the temple. The abomination of desolation is when the Antichrist will stand in the temple proclaiming himself to be God. Now we know how to read and understand Daniel 27. When we see a peace treaty signed between Israel and the Palestinians, which confirms Israel's right to a homeland in the Middle East, places the Temple Mount under a sharing agreement and allows the building of Israel's third temple, that is the beginning of the final seven years to Armageddon. In the middle of that final seven years, the Antichrist will stop the sacrifices, stand in the rebuilt temple, and proclaim himself to be God. That event is the abomination of desolation, which begins the final three and a half years to Armageddon. The final three and a half years is what Jesus called the Great Tribulation. The prophecy with the date on it. It is very critical that we understand the confirmation of the covenant and the events of the final seven years. We are getting ready to watch the events of this final seven year period to come to pass in the very near future. The Middle East peace agreement will soon be signed between the Palestinians and the Israelis. When this historic event takes place, we will know that there are seven years remaining until the coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus. That's why we call the confirmation of the covenant the prophecy with a date on it so that's it thanks for watching